After almost two decades of WoW Arena, we've learned three basic rules that you can safely follow regardless of your rating in almost every single matchup. And by applying these three rules to solo shuffle, we guarantee that you will deal more damage, CC more effectively, and even protect your healer with one easy positioning rule. Why are we so confident? It's because we've been teaching WoW PvP for over 10 years, working alongside rank 1 players, tournament competitors, and even BlizzCon champions to curate the largest collection of PvP guides on the internet, with over 250 hours of high quality videos. And now for a limited time, Skillcap members can even get one free VOD review every month with an annual subscription, which is over a $500 value. These are just a taste of the amazing perks we offer risk-free to every Skillcap member, and is why we continue offering a rating gain guarantee where we promise you can gain 400 rating just by using our service. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below for an exclusive discount offer. For now, back to the video. First, we need to remember what actually matters in Solo Shuffle. Most players would say it's damage, and of course, doing big damn is important. But the smarter answer is momentum, which means being able to control the balance of pressure between you and your opponent. The obvious way to do this is through offensive cooldowns, but have you ever been in a situation where you just pressed your swifty one-shot macro, expecting to mow down the enemy team? But then, nothing seems to happen. How could you be doing zero pressure when you just popped everything? 90% of the time, it's because there was a giant defensive CD that got in the way. This brings us to our first rule. Get in the habit of swapping on defensive cooldowns immediately. The idea is simple but incredibly effective, and is something you need to be aware of no matter what spec you play. Notice here that the Warlock has overlapped Wall with the Disc Priest Life Swap, who is only a few steps away from our Warrior. Right now, the Warlock is taking 40% less damage with a perfectly viable swap target just inches away. But instead of swapping, the Warrior misses out on an opportunity to interrupt the Priest's ultimate penitence. And with the combination of Unending Resolve, the Warlock's HP doesn't even take a dent. Then to make matters worse, the Lock gets Pain Suppression and then ports away. The Warrior insists on chasing, burning a Gap Closer only to do zero damage for almost 10 seconds, gaining zero momentum. Had they instead just swapped targets earlier, they could have kept pressure rolling even through defensive cooldowns. Swapping during defensives is even better when you have your own offensives popped. In order to get the most value out of your damage increases, you need to avoid anything that will directly reduce your damage output. And by doing so, you can even force defensives from multiple players, opening up more than one potential kill window later on. Otherwise, you are just leaving free damage on the table. Just ask any healer. There is nothing worse than seeing a defensive up on one player breathing a short sigh of relief, only for the enemy team to instantly swap and start trucking someone else. Now, there are multiple pressure points you have to deal with, and one healing mistake could instantly result in a loss. Sometimes even healers themselves can make great swap targets, and this is something players like Big Max will do all the time, especially in 2v2. But you could easily apply the same logic to Solo Shuffle. Notice how he has just recently trapped the rest of Druid, forcing his partner to use Netherwalk. There is no reason to not swap here, and now by swapping the Druid, he has continued pressure during his cooldown window. This basic strategy can easily be applied to Holy Paladins in Solo Shuffle. Whenever they press Sack, they will be giving their partner damage reduction at the cost of taking increased damage themselves, which means swapping to the Paladin instantly is basically double the pressure. And this is even more beneficial since they are practically immune to half of the CC in the game during this time. Melee aren't the only ones who need to care about swapping on CDs though, so if you play Caster, take notes too. Here this Warlock not only has their 40% wall up, but also has an additional 20% damage reduction from Iron Bark, and has full Resto Druid Hods. Some of you might notice that the Hunter accidentally sacked themselves, which makes them a bit awkward to hit. But take a look at the Druid, who is standing in the open. At this point, any one of these targets is better than the Warlock, but instead, this player simply tries to truck through the CDs, causing their damage to be 50% as effective, and once again, the Warlock's HP doesn't even budge. At this point though, some of you out there might be asking why you should swap, since people die through CDs all the time anyways. And while there is some truth to that, you have to think of the strength of each defensive. Complete damage immunities like Ice Block are basically instant swaps unless you can remove them. Partial immunities like Evasion require some more thought, but if you deal pure physical damage and can't guarantee a stun, then you should probably swap quickly. Then, there are major damage reductions like Pain Suppression, where the DPS loss is so high that targets typically won't die through unless already low on health. And finally, we have minor forms of damage reduction, which don't always require a swap, but if your goal is to maximize pressure, then swapping can be a good idea. Being able to instantly recognize how much damage reduction someone has up is a fundamental skill you need in order to climb. Add-ons like big debuffs or fly plate buffs can make it easier to spot when enemy players have defensives popped, and both are included in our PvP package over on Discord. 
but if you still need to know what every buff actually does, that's why our buff knowledge course is so valuable. If you don't know what every major defensive looks like, chances are you are wasting damage and failing to open up kill windows with a simple swap. So at this point, we've clearly established rule number one, but now we need to solve another problem. Ever had a lobby where someone is screaming at you to peel? So then you go into your next game getting ready to babysit your partner, but without knowing it, you accidentally make one of the biggest peeling mistakes. Let's explain. Here our healer has been under pressure the whole game and is now sitting safe on HP. But then our DK will stun the monk for no reason, and then right after our warrior will shockwave both DPS, which now leaves everyone free to attack. Which is soon going to be an issue when the enemy monk pops serenity, since our team burned all their peels just moments before with every DR they had, resulting in having nothing left to counter the actual scary damage. Many players make the mistake of not planning their peels for when they actually matter, which is during moments where the enemy team is doing their go. How do we fix this? Here, we will introduce our second rule, which is to be reactive with your CC, prioritizing it to counter enemy cooldowns or CC on your healer. Notice here how the enemy monk instantly pops serenity, which means now our paladin is in actual danger. Because of this, Joe will stormbolt the monk, overlapping with his paladin's stun on accident, but then immediately fears the trinket. And now, both DPS are peeled when our paladin is actually under pressure from CDs. If you have spammable CC, it's a good idea to save DRs for enemy cooldowns as they come up. Notice here that he snipes a Ring of Frost on the Monk's Serenity while his partner is low. He will then let the ring sit for as long as possible, and the moment it ends, he is instantly ready for not just one, but two follow-up polymorphs. By peeling during Serenity with spammable CC, it means you can efficiently peel for almost the entire duration of the cooldown itself. But there is one additional step you can take. You can make your peels double as effective if you can use the CC itself for your own go. This can be as simple as sending a rogue on their shadow dance and then bursting them down, or waiting for a hunter to trap before using any form of CC while your healer is taken out of the game. By letting your opponents make the first move, you are now in the perfect position to peel, which you can also use to counter pressure. If you've ever wondered why Chanamel is considered the best warlock of all time, one reason is because he is insanely good at shutting down kill windows with CC while reversing pressure. Notice here how his healer gets trapped, which you already know means someone on his team will be needing peels soon. But planning ahead, he has already feared the enemy healer. And then will Infernal stun and coil the Demon Hunter. And look, during the enemy team's go, he has managed to not only peel, but reverse pressure in the process. Now we have two basic rules to follow for damage and CC. And now we have a third to avoid some positioning traps. The biggest complaint of every healer in Solo Shuffle is when their partners decide to run halfway across the map to chase a target for no reason. This brings us to our third rule, avoid positioning traps. This involves two parts. The first is simple, don't chase. Unless the kill is 100% guaranteed, you don't have to chase the warlock who just gated halfway across the map. And if you are wondering what target you can always swap to, it's the one closest to your healer. If an enemy DPS is pushing up to your healer's pillar, the simple act of swapping to them can be enough to push them back, allowing them to avoid swaps and CC. It's like killing three birds with one stone. You prevent your healer from getting harassed and avoid overextending in the process, all while maintaining momentum. This has been a common strategy for high level melee for years into double caster. Instead of overextending deep into enemy territory, top level melee just make quick efficient swaps to the caster closest to their healer, acting like a guard dog to make sure their healer stays safe. And by doing this, you get foolproof positioning. You are in your healer's line and everyone is happy. The other positioning trap you need to actively avoid is kiting to or stacking on top of your healer whenever you're in trouble. DPS often make the mistake of thinking that running to the healer means they will be safe, but in a world of insane cleave damage and AoE CC, cutting to your healer is just giving the enemy team more momentum for free. To avoid this from happening, you should periodically check where your healer is in the first place. This can be hard to do, but playing with a zoomed out camera like Vanguard's can help, since it allows you to keep track of multiple players at once. You can also go to our Discord to download our Threat Plates profile that displays class icons above friendly players. Then anytime you are under pressure, be careful of stacking on your healer's pillar. If you are directly on top of them, try to move yourself in a way where you can avoid the enemy team's damage while still being in your healer's range and line of sight. If you can manage to follow all three of these rules, we guarantee you will have high win rates in almost every single matchup, regardless of rating. But before we wrap up, we want to remind you about skillcap.com. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us, we've offered this for years because our service really does work. 
It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the greatest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries, where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server, where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you to reach their rating goals. So if you want instant access to more than 250 hours of content, free monthly VOD reviews, and a 400 rating guarantee, be sure to visit skillcap.com using the links below. Anyways guys, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we want to thank you all for watching, and see you soon.